If you're already shooting food photography, but you don't have a good storage and backup system in place, then that's something you need to address right now. In this video, I'm gonna take you through my step-by-step -step raw file storage and backup system so you can start protecting your work straight away. Today, we're continuing on with the Food Photography Foundation series. This is actually the last video in the series. So if you've missed any of the previous lessons, then check out the Food Photography Foundation's playlist, which includes all the previous videos for you to peruse. In this video, we'll be planning your storage and backup system for your raw files. While it's definitely not the most exciting of topics, it is an essential part of your workflow. And getting into good habits with your file management and backup system from the start will make it much easier than trying to do this when you're already a year or two into your photography journey and you're swimming in raw files. There are three phases to your raw files journey. Firstly, there's the shooting phase where you create them. Secondly, there's the editing. And lastly, there's storage and backup. In this lesson, I'm gonna share with you my suggested system for managing each of these phases easily. However, backup and storage systems are personal. And if any part of this doesn't work for you or you feel something else would work better, absolutely go ahead and customize it. But if you're looking for a step-by-step -step system to get you started, then this is for you. So this is the equipment that I suggest you start with as a beginner, which can grow with you over time. It is a bit of an upfront investment, but keeping your work safe is worth its weight in gold. So you're gonna need two external hard drives, each at least one terabyte. One will be your working drive and the other will be your local backup drive. You're also gonna need two SD cards, each at least 128 gigabytes, a laptop or computer, and a cloud backup system such as iDrive, Backblaze, AWS, etc. So the 321 backup principle states that you should have three copies of your assets, which in this case is your raw files, two copies locally and one remotely, which would be your cloud backup. This means you have more than two points of failure. So if one of your hard drives fails, you have another local copy. And if both of your local copies were destroyed in an event like a fire, you have a remote backup as well. You can set most of this up to work on autopilot. So the manual work is minimal and you know your files are safe. So let's walk through the workflow end to end so you can set it up alongside me. If you shoot tethered, the first step is to set up a folder on your working hard drive and name it. The naming conventions you choose to name your folder should be something that makes sense to you. Once you've got your final picks sorted, import them into your editing catalogue of choice and organise them into a collection. This is probably going to be Lightroom or Capture One depending on your preference. You will import your images directly from the folder on your working hard drive that you created. The way catalogues work is like a lookup system. They don't store your files directly, but rather when you import them, you tell the program where to find them. Therefore, once you import them from this folder, your working drive needs to be plugged into your computer to work with your files in your editing program. This is the most efficient way to store your files and keep them in one place. You don't wanna be storing raw files directly on your computer as once it fills up, you'll need to move them all and that would involve relinking images in your catalog, which is a pain. <laughs> Next, we're gonna make sure that this working drive is backed up to create the second local copy of our files. There are a few different ways to do this depending on whether you are a Mac or a Windows user. So find the best backup solution for you. And lastly, you'll want to set up a cloud backup system to back up your working drive to create your remote backup. I personally use iDrive for this, but there are many systems available. So you can browse and pick the one that works best for you. Once you've configured this, it will normally download a program onto your computer. So again, as long as your working drive is plugged in at the time you set your backup to start, it will create a remote backup for you. If you don't tether and you shoot onto an SD card directly in your camera instead, then there's just one more step for you at the beginning. At the end of your shoot, connect your SD card into your computer and move your files from your SD card into the folder you created on your working hard drive for that shoot. Once your files are secure on your working 
working hard drive and backed up on your local backup hard drive, you can go ahead and format your SD card ready for use on your next shoot. Your storage and backup system will grow and develop with you over the years, but having these principles in place from the beginning will go a long way to making it easier to find your files and maximize your storage space. Thanks so much for joining me in this foundation series. I hope you found it useful and it was a good way to start the year. Sometimes it's good to revisit the basics and make sure all your systems are in tip top shape. So I will see you in the next video.